Hey guys, John here. In one of our last discussion videos, we were talking about what plugin that we have that we regret buying, right? Whether it's a synthesizer, whether it's an effect plugin, or really anything of the sort, right? And it had me thinking, what is the opposite of that, right? Because you guys let me know a lot of plugins to stay away from, so thank you for that. So now we're going to flip the coin a little bit. What is a life-changing plugin that you've bought, and maybe you like it so much that you would actually buy it again? It is that good. So I kind of sat for a while and I was thinking, which plugins have changed my life, right? Or which synthesizers, effects, or whatever it could be has changed my life and maybe you made me have a breakthrough in synthesis or maybe understand things a little bit better. So I put together a couple of different ones and this is by no means saying that the other ones are bad or anything like that. It was actually a hard list to kind of chop down to the very, very bones of things. So first on the list for me at least is going to be pigments. Now, I know this isn't the synthesizer that can do everything possible on the planet, but with that being said, I really feel like it's life changing for me because one, it's such an easy interface to work with, right? If I'm trying to hear, if I hear a sound, and I'm trying to remake it. A lot of the times I'll hop into pigments because it's very fast and it's easy to see what's going on, right? And another thing I like, especially about pigments is if I made a patch, maybe like a couple of years ago and I revisit it, it's really easy to see what's being modulated, what's going on with the patch, what's in use, what's not in use, and that kind of thing, right? It's nice with the different engines, right? We can kind of mix and match, right? We have our analogs, we have our harmonic here over here. We can go to sample, wavetable, analog again if we'd like to. We have a utility engine down over here, which is really cool. Although there's a cool thing I really wish they would add is here on the utility engine, how we can go over this offset right and go to a direct out, for example, like I do in a lot of stuff. It'd be cool to have the engines have that as well, but that's a thing for another topic. But anyway, I do like pigments because of the nice interface it has. It's really easy to use. It's colorful. Everything moves. So it's really nice and simple to use once you kind of spend a little bit of time with that. The effects section is great as well. We have a lot of different effects slots that we can use. We also have an auxiliary, which again, it would be really cool if we could change this auxiliary to either pre and post effects. That would be really awesome. That's something I've wanted for a long time. Maybe that's in the future, who knows, but that would be really, really, really cool because that would kind of give us an additional three slots after these six here. But yeah, so Pigments has been one of my all time favorite life changing plugins. It's one of those I would buy again if I could, right? So next up on the list here, I have none other than Diva. Now, <laughs> This one, I'm sure, is no surprise to any of you that it sounds amazing. Right, so a really cool thing about Diva, I feel that I feel it's life changing for me is that one, it covers the base of anything that's analog sim simulation kind of deal, right? So if I'm making a track and I'm like, okay, maybe I want a little bit more, I guess, realism for lack of better term, even though it's, you know, you know what we're talking about here. If I want something like that, I'll reach for Diva, right? If we want uh, a mini Moog or something like that, we can totally do that. Or we can change these out to these different panels and kind of just mix and match. Like what I like really doing is, for example, if we went to an MS-20 oscillators and then we sent that through the ladder filter, right? That's a pretty cool sound. We can change the envelopes. It's very, it's very simplistic once you kind of, I guess, get to know it a little bit, right? It looks complicating, I suppose, when you first look at it, and it's kind of a little bit different than what we're used to. However, once you kind of gr get the concept of it, once you grasp it, it's really not that bad, and it's quick to dial stuff up. Another thing that's really cool about Diva is the, the effects here, right? We only have two slots, which is, <clears throat> I guess, kind of a bummer in one sense, but in another way, it kind of forces us to really, really think about what we want to do and really kind of, ch I guess, choose which which effects are appropriate for that patch, right? And all these effects sound sound really good. I really like the reverb in here. The uh, the chorus is really nice. I don't think I ever make a patch without a chorus or a reverb sometimes. But yeah, it's a really nice synthesizer and it sounds great. It's I feel like this is one of these synthesizers that if I use it in a track, it definitely levels it up at least to some degree, right? It gives it some kind of realism. Because I've noticed tracks I've done without Diva and tracks I've done with Diva, and it has for lack of better terms, leveled up that track, at least for me personally. Maybe it's a bias thing, I don't know, but either or, I feel like it's a really, really solid plugin to pick from. So next up on the list is going to be this guy, so Falcon. <laughs> I mean, that filter is just nasty. 
So this is one of the first patches I've made, or one of the first couple, I think, with Falcon. And it was really taking a look at the, if we go down over here to the edit page, edit page, edit page over here, this VCF20 filter is probably one of my favorites. I think I even like this one slightly more than Diva, which is probably kind of crazy to say, but it just sounds really, really, really good. So the reason this one's on here as a life-changing plugin is because... I mean, if you know Falcon, you probably understand this already, but if you don't, this is basically a plugin where there's almost really no limits to it, right? If you want to make some crazy instrument out of it, you can totally do that, right? This thing I'll never forget that I read somewhere. I think it was probably on Reddit. I don't know, but in synthesizers, we make patches, right? In Falcon, you have the possibility to make instruments, which is very true, right? Anything that you can really think of that you want to make, Falcon can get you there, right? It's insane the the depth that this plugin has. It does take a little bit longer to program, but really, if this was your only Desert Island synth, like most of you picked as well, you kind of understand that you really have all the bases covered. It's a very, very deep plugin. It sounds good, and it just you can really do whatever you want with it. The only downside I would say is the learning curve. That one's kind of a, a hurdle to get through, right? Because it's a whole different way of thinking about it and just the, how, how it works as far as the key groups right here, like these key groups, the layers, the programs, the multis, that can be very confusing when you first kind of lay your, your eyes on it. But after you kind of soak that in for a while and digest that and kind of get comfortable with it, it's much easier to really grasp it right to use it and then you kind of you're going to start to actually like the differences right you're going to be like okay this is cool i can put this on the key group but let's put that in the layer but maybe if we do another program and you start like thinking outside the box and really kind of making patches that you never probably would have made before right so that's definitely a cool one and the next one this is going to be the last for the synthesizer section is going to be avenger and i kind of put this one almost as like a teammate with falcon in that sense where it's, it's very deep. You can do a lot of stuff with it. It's very, the effects sound really good. The reason I kind of put these with, with Falcon is that it, it has almost that depth to it, but I feel like Avenger 2 is a little bit faster to get you where you want to go, right? And I guess that's an interesting way to put it, right? They can both get you pretty, pretty far, but Avenger is also very quick. So you kind of get that really deep complexity on one side, but you also get the, I guess the, uh, usability that maybe something like pigments would have, right? So it's kind of almost that hybrid-ish as well there is, I guess as well. It's kind of hard to explain, right? But if you do have a venture, you probably understand that, right? It sounds very good. It's really easy to get you there. And the presets are also very, very good. And I always say whenever I can or whenever the topic comes up, don't judge a synth by its presets, whether the presets are amazing or whether they're bad, right? So on that aspect, it's definitely a life-changing plugin for me. So that was the synthesizer aspect, although there's a lot of other ones that I feel like I'm, I would neglect or that they should be mentioned in here. And that's not to say that they're bad, right? Like I do love the CS80 for a lot of different things or any of the other stuff in the uh, Arturia collection. It's just a lot of those aren't necessarily life-changing per se, I would suppose to say. It's kind of hard to pick, really pick that from them. Really try, like after you watch this video, try to think about which ones which synthesizers, maybe if you can pick like three or four that are life-changing, not ones that you just love or you really like, but ones that are crucial that have changed your way of making music or have changed your way of thinking, right? I'm sure Serum will pop up for a lot of people, <clears throat> which is probably a good thing because that one, without Serum, a lot, I think a lot of different companies later on down the road would have not adapted or changed their workflow to kind of match what the market needed at that point, if that makes any sense. Anyway, so let's close these synthesizers out and let's talk about some other ones. So, and the first, I guess, effects, or I don't know if you really call it an effect, but anyway, I would like to introduce Stepic again because there's synthesizers that I use that don't have a very complex arpeggiator or to make a really cool sequence or something like that. And you pair that with Stepic and then boom, you have a whole road of possibilities to drive down. It's pretty crazy. So Stepic is really cool because you can make almost any kind of arp that you want to or any kind of sequence that you want to. And if you haven't dove in, even if you haven't dived into it, Jesus Christ, if you haven't dived into it pretty deep, there's probably stuff in here that you don't even understand yet that it can do. It's pretty mind-blowing. So I highly recommend you check Step out if you haven't. So definitely a life-changing plugin for me because like I said, there's synthesizer, like for example, I don't know if I was using like 3X OSC, which is, it's a cool one from, from FL Studio. But if you pair that with Step, holy crap, man, you can do whatever 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 you want to do. Okay, and so moving on here, I have the reverb category, and I've said this in many, many videos over the years, but 
Valhalla Vintage Verb, I think I got this, man, I want to say 2012 or 13, something like that. Uh, might have been a little early. I can't even remember, but it was a long time ago, and I bought this, and I was like, you know what? This is probably one of my favorite reverbs I've ever heard, and I went to the website, and I was kind of reading more about it, and there's something on there that stuck with me where it said, why is this reverb so cheap? And the answer was that a reverb shouldn't cost more than your DAW. And I never forgot that. I was like, that's really, really cool and thoughtful <clears throat> because at the time I was actually very poor and I was like, I can finally afford a good reverb. And I bought it and I was like, this actually is really, really good because sometimes in our minds, if we see something that's priced a little bit low, we might kind of think that it's of lower quality or vice versa, right? If we see something that's really expensive, we might think that it's better, but in, in the end, it's not really, right? So that being said, Valhalla Vintage Verb was a life changer for me because for about, oh my God, we're in almost 2024. So with that being said, it's almost been 10 years since I've used this reverb and I have not changed it out for anything else aside from the uh, the Lux Verb that came with FL Studio to try it out. And I always keep that in my templates because it is pretty good. But this one right here has been life changing for me. And yeah, very, very cool reverb. I'm sure you probably had it or heard it. it's been out for a long time and there's a lot of cool stuff to it as well. Also the uh, the modes here, the where are we here? The dirty plate, I think that's kind of new. That one's also a really cool one if you haven't checked that out yet. Okay, so last but not least, let's take a look at Presveac. So this one, holy crap. So for a long time, I've kind of been looking for, I guess an all all around compressor that can kind of just do everything I need it to do. Cause there's a lot of times where at least for me, I'm writing something or I'm putting a song together and I don't really want to think about which compressor goes right with this track, or which this, I, I kind of don't really care in the long scheme. I just want a compressor that's good. It does, it covers every ground I need it to do and that I can rely on. And then once I finally got this one, I was like, okay, my search for the most part is finally over, right? This one sounds good. And what's kind of cool about Presveac is that it's not necessarily modeled after a very specific type of analog gear, but it has that analog life to it, I suppose, if that makes any sense. And what really sold me on it is like, once we're first looking at this, it's a lot of stuff going on, which is really cool. You can really spend a lot of time with it. But if you kind of just want to get, get to the punch or what is it? What are these stupid sayings? Get to the punch, catch to the chase. Oh my God, there's a, I'm so bad at those. But anyway, up here at the top where it says init view, you can click this arrow and we have a lot of different stuff to go through. If you need an easy compressor, it literally says easy compressor and then boom, threshold, ratio, response, output, soft clip, boom, you're done. And it sounds really cool. So like if you're in the middle middle of a song, you're like, I just need to compress this a little bit. You don't need to have this, this compressor open and like fiddle with a hundred thousand knobs if you don't need to. Boom, there you go. And then if you're like, okay, I have a vocal, comp I want a vocal compressor. Kaboom, here you go. It's really not that complicated. And then if you want a drum compressor, you got that as well with these nice little interfaces, which is pretty cool. And then uh, we have a bus compressor. If you want to, if you have a group of things that you're busing somewhere and you want to compress those bad boys, then here you go. And then last, or not last, but at least we have an MS compressor, which is pretty cool. If you need this for whatever you, whatever you're doing, any crazy stuff, then there you go. And last but not least, right, we have a limiter that you can put on your master bus or really you could even put it on a group if you want to, whatever you want to do. So that kind of really sold things out for me. And I was like, let me just try this. I was like trying to put together a track really fast, as fast as I could. And I threw this on here. I'm like, let me just try this easy compressor or this vocal compressor and see how it does. And I put this on a vocal and I was like, holy crap, this is it. I think my search is done. So... In a nutshell, this is a great compressor. Definitely go try it out. If you don't have it, check out the demo. You might actually really like it. It's really cool. And one of the ones that I kind of really want to get at some point, because for a long time, I've always used the, the stock EQ from FL, right? So let's kind of load this bad boy up here. So up here in our filter section, this parametric EQ, which for the most part has gotten me through a lot of stuff, right? It's very easy to use. It's, it's very visual. You have a lot of visual feedback. You have a lot of bands to work with, or seven specifically. And I kind of just liked, I've used this one for, I guess, ever since it came out, right? I've had FL since, God, 2003, I think, 2004, something like that. So I've kind of been familiar with this plugin. I mean, it's advanced and grown throughout the years, obviously. But with that being said, this is a very cool one. And one I kind of have had my eye on for a long time is the Fab Filter EQ. Everybody says it's really cool, and I believe it. I've seen a lot of videos. I'm like, man, this thing seems really amazing but I just don't know if I'm going to pull the trigger on it yet. I probably will eventually at some point, but yeah, that's one that I, that I personally think will be life-changing for me because I like to put in a lot of thought into, not like putting into, 
Jesus Christ. I like putting a thought into plugins that I'm going to invest in or that I'm going to really use for, for a lot. And I kind of want to stick with one, right? Like ever since I got Pressback, I really haven't used another compressor outside like compressors inside the synths themselves, but like an outboard or out DAW, whatever you want to call it, uh, compressor. I've really only stuck to that one. Same as the Valhalla Vintage Verb. I don't really venture too far out to different reverbs unless I'm trying something crazy or something weird and I need to do it. But for the most part, I kind of like the plugins that are set in Forget It, right? Because if we have a reverb and we have a good... Uh, compressor EQ, stuff like that, that we're kind of saw like our base tools, right? Like if we're building a house, we want our good screwdrivers, our good whatever fucking tools you need. You, we want those, right? And we, we don't want to keep switching them out for different ver versions of different things because then we have to look at this again and slow us down. Okay, what does this thing do? What's that button do? We want good tools that we can rely on that are kind of our basic building blocks. And then once we have that, then we can kind of just focus on whatever it is we want to do. So I think I've rambled on for quite a long time now already. So yeah, the question is basically what is your life-changing plugins? The ones that you actually feel have upgraded your skills or have upgraded your tracks or that made you think about things a little bit differently. Not just plugins that are like, oh, this one's cool. I like this synth. It sounds good. Not just that, but ones that have really pushed you forward in the... Uh, the echelon and the love of sound design or music or whatever you want to call it. So uh, yeah, that's the topic for this video. Look forward to seeing what you guys write because maybe I might buy something based upon that. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and let me know what you guys use because I kind of, I kind of like having new stuff. Anyway, see you in the next video.